<laughs> um, yeah. So thank you for allowing me to force you to take real life awesome things that are a part of my life and put them into my game. Hey, um, that was awesome. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Tight. But we are going to return back to the alley. Mike, you have just felt William kind of go limp. Like, there, there is an audible kind of very sickening snap that came from him. And now his eyes, while still wide, there's like tears coming out of him a little bit. Aww. Well, oh, it's such a big baby. <laughs> you kind of, you, you look around and um, you, you notice that there's the uh, passed out guy back behind you. There's a bit of the blood splatter from the guy that was watermeloned in the uh behind the building and you see kind of the, the blood splatter that comes from you know the the warehouse where where you were and you you notice that um you know the the streets are starting to get a, a bit more empty but every once in a while someone you know some of the crowd kind of looks down the alley and definitely takes a few more moments to look at the scene before continuing on their way back to home or bar or wherever they might be going. This uh, new individual has just arrived and uh, yeah, she's just kind of standing there holding uh, a pill or something in her hands. Well, one, it's a good thing I'm wearing a bandana over my face so nobody will recognize me. And Two, I plan on just swiping the pill from her since she backed away like a little female. Excuse me. And uh, <laughs> shove it in his mouth. <laughs> well, I wanted to make it easier so he didn't have to censor YouTube quite so much. <laughs> All right. So as you uh, go to place the, the pill in his mouth as well, I'm going to have you... Face danger, danger being, you Ew. know, <laughs> vampire bites. <laughs> what tags are you going to use to not get bit? Uh, bullet time. Uh, what other tag is on currently? I don't need a weapon. Uh, I know Kung Fu. <laughs> sure. Uh, maybe. Sure, yeah. Well, I mean, I've got to navigate between these. Like, it, it's precision. Mm -hmm. uh, sure. It's going to be... Yeah, that's going to be it. Which uh, which move? Uh, this would be facing danger. Or going towards uh. And these are sharp teeth. Okay. Yeah, they are. So. <laughs> I'm gonna say Hello. you're you're able to to get him in there. Um, he's not gonna take a a taste of your blood, so that that's a good thing. But you're you're still gonna take a slice on your finger. It's just a tier one status, so it's not all that bad. But yeah, your your finger has definitely been been cut as you draw it back. Oh no! I know. <laughs> you never know what that might lead to. So William, you you feel something kind of solid, um, kind of enter your your throat, and you you attempt to swallow, and um, it takes you like a moment you kind of cough for a bit because there there's you're not drinking anything to swallow a pill so it's kind of like sticking as it goes down um but eventually you're able the clouds kill me mm -hmm. <laughs> eventually you're able to swallow it and you you begin to feel like your your stomach's starting to get mo a bit more warm and you feel your heart begin to beat a bit faster um yeah you want to try to break out of this this strangeness uh sure okay 
So, I'm going to have you... Th this will be a change the game. And... Um, <clears throat> what you can do is add the pill as a plus one. So that story tag you can use as a plus one to the roll. And then explain to me what other power tags you feel... William would still have the capability to understand that will help him kind of break out of this strange mental trip. Problem is, I don't have any. Okay. <laughs> That's not uh, a problem. You can go ahead and uh, roll your change of the game with a power of one. Okay. So... With that, you're going to be able to reduce the status to a tier one. Um, the clouds begin to kind of reach back and turn nice into wispy clouds. You see William, his face begins to plump up a little bit, and you look over the, the shadow, you know, turns into ember. Um, you still feel kind of light dead, lightheaded, a bit woozy, but as far as the, the physical and, and sight-based things, they seem to have faded a bit Mike why are you sitting on me as soon as he says something more normal I'm gonna immediately release him and uh, offer, an hand, offer a hand down to pick him up I'm glad to see that, that works magic for you. I, I don't know what happened. I don't feel great. And I'm going to take his hand and hop up. And who are you? <laughs> what is going on? See, my name is Ember, and I've also been sent by the Order. I hope you and your investigation and pretty much what we found out at this point is that if you go near the you get a little strange I'm gonna lean over to William and whisper we have a babysitter <laughs> <laughs> you have a babysitter she's just gonna like quirk an eyebrow at him All right, back in we go. And I'll walk in to the to the warehouse. So yeah, by the time that you kind of get in there, you notice that the smoke is beginning to kind of enter onto the street. You've been able to pull down a pretty good corner, um, you know, leaving probably a good two or three inch space between the the wall where this thing was shoved into and and opening it up. Um, Ember, as you get close to it, like you smell the familiar sense of, of opium, but there's this very heavy hanging metallic kind of taste to it. Interesting. Um, you go kind of down, back down the, the steps. By now, the, the smoke, again, it's kind of hanging low, but it seems to be resting at mid kind of calf um, level. And... Again, you, you just see it kind of pouring out of this spot there in the metal wall. Um, yeah, what would you like to do? Are we all three going into the hallway now? It's up to you. He hasn't opened the space wide enough for you to actually get into the hallway. You could stick your head we'll in there and take a look around right if you want to, yeah. Okay. Or um, so yeah, she's going to turn back to the, the boys and pretty much announce. I'm familiar with what this is, but we don't really know how it affects people. What I've found, heard, is that it can cause rapid aging. Um, if it is what I think it is, uh, which is a certain type of opium that we're not really sure the source of. But if it is what I think it is, it is a little dangerous, and I think we should tread carefully. Mm -hmm. 
Careful, yeah. <laughs> oh. I don't know if that's really in Yasuo. I'm going to tighten my bandana and uh, work on getting the passageway open fully. Okay. You, you notice as you kind of pull on it that whatever latch that William had, had loosened seemed to have released it. So with really no effort at all, you're able to open it. And as you do, again, the smoke kind of like water flows into the room. And you all kind of cough a little bit. But standing in this room with that door open, it's kind of pulling some of the smoke out. But it seems like it's just all flowing. You don't see the level seem to be dropping or anything like that. It's just continuous. So you have a moment to still breathe in here before it gets too heavy, but it's it's starting to kind of choke you, feel heavy in your in your lungs. Uh, and it's pretty dark in there, correct? Yeah, like I mean, really, you can see... It's got, like, the lanterns, but not much else. Yeah, like, there's that very faint orange glow that there's lots of shadows, but still a, some sources of light. Okay. Is this room, like, unable for us... Like, is it difficult for us to be in this room? Or... Not... Okay. As long as the other door is open, the... It, you, if you stay in here for far too long, like, yeah, you'll probably start to feel effects right now for the next few minutes. It's okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, you're, you're getting a pretty strong hit just from standing now with the, the, the wall wide open. Um, you, you definitely know going deeper in there, like you're, you're going to get the full hit of whatever the, the smoke is. Mm. Right. So we're going in, right? Oh God. <laughs> Maybe we need to find a way, like, like the equivalent of, equivalent of like a gas mask, something to filter our air so we don't, you know, get high in the first two minutes and freak out like he did. He only poked his head in. I say we <laughs> send him back in and see if your pills have done the trick. Oh God! I'm not sure how long the effect would be. Well, let's find out. Like... Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, okay, let's do it. Send it back in and see how long it's Sure, let's go in. Why not? Wander back out. <laughs> okay. I, just you, William? Is anybody following you? I'm not going to let him go very far in. Like, he's within, like, me being able to grab him and pull him back. Just to where he's, you know, fully submerged in the smoke that's pouring out. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, William, sure. you begin to approach the, the hallway, kind of have that familiar scent. Take a deep breath, kind of hold your breath, and step into the smoke. Please face danger for me to avoid the effects of the smoke. You can use the story tag if you wish. I would say That's it's still tag. probably effective for at least one more point of avoiding it um the caffeine pill that you just took so plus one oh. nopium. the nopium yeah <laughs> thank you for reminding me <laughs> stop that uh i'm gonna use indomitable as well okay you will not overpower me smoke i am more powerful than I you i am scarier than you are i have teeth I have lots of teeth. Okay. As you walk in, kind of begin to breathe lightly at first, and you notice that mm, feels okay. Mike, you watch William enter in. The smoke kind of fades over his shoulders, and he begins to kind of blend in, and again, the smoke covers where he is you reach in to grab him he's not there William you turn expecting to see light but as you turn around you realize the door's not there anymore the lanterns are still there on the left and the right and that glow that you thought was coming from the storage place was from just another lantern itself 
This is not the hallway you were just looking at. This hallway is different. The, the hallway juts to the left, not to the right. It looks to go down. This is not the same place that it was when you first looked. No. Well, I'm going to uh, put my hand on that right wall and just kind of follow it then because I got to find my way back out. So I'm just going to hug the right wall and see if I can find an exit. I'm already this far in. Might as well keep going. All right. So you begin to wander. Mike, you grab in. There's nothing but smoke coming out. What do you want to do? It's possible he might have gone deeper than you thought, but you can't tell from standing from this so far out here. Yeah, I'm I'm not going to risk it as I have not taken the pill yet. So uh I'll probably turn to Ember and ask for a a dose. Yeah, and she'll pretty readily give him one, seeing okay. that its effects seem to be positive. Okay. Perfect. So I'm going to have you change the game also because you're wearing a mask. I would say we could use this to create that as a story tag too. So we could create a positive status from the caffeine pill based off of how well it affects you. And then if we have any of the juice still left, uh, we can create an additional story tag for your mask. Um, So that's what's kind of awesome about Change the Game is it, it allows you to utilize things in different ways. So for... William, you know, the effect was more kind of cutting him out of that, so it was just a, a bonus, but we don't know how this nopium is going to affect from person to person to person, so it might be able to, again, create different statuses. It might just be a story tag. There's different ways to go about it. Okay. So, well, we have the pill. What, um, what other... <laughs> Things do you have that would help you to kind of prepare yourself to oh. possibly enter into the smoke? Uh, bullet time to be able to kind of assess the situation quicker and see if it's affecting me Okay. when I step into the smoke. Okay. I'm only just barely stepping in. Like, I'm keeping my hand on the door. See, you should have brought your own smoke. And then you just... <laughs> You just fight off the smoke with smoke. Uh, that'll be it. Okay. Change the game. Nope. (laughs) (laughs) Of course I miss on that one. And Mike just starts (laughs) flailing on the ground. Ah! As you... Use I'm your hold on to the door. Remember, you're, yep, you're holding. You hold on to the door. You kind hold of the take the, the the caffeine pill. You kind of uh, lean in. You finally kind of release your your breath to take a breath of the smoke. And you you feel kind of dizzy, so you pull back right away. Take a deep breath and kind of look panic towards the door and begin to kind of make your way to the, the door to get a breath, a deep breath of, of fresh air. And as you peek out, you look down and you see that there are three constables that are making their way down the alley. It seems that they've noticed one of the bodies and are making their way towards them. <laughs> you uh, great. You guys screwed. I'm high. I'm in a maze. Let's do it. <laughs> so as we fade past the, the constables making their way down the alley, we fade back into this darkened room. A bit of orange glow is playing up against the back wall as three figures begin to walk around. Blanche, you've seen pictures, you've seen portraits, you've seen art. You've never seen life displayed on the wall like this. What's going on through your mind? Um, I think at first, instinctively, she would want to know, you know, how somebody else could have magic like that. And then she'd kind of, you know, remember that they were using some sort of weird machine-like contraption. So it's probably less magic, more science, at least hopefully. 
Um, and that his capturing people's soul and essence was, you know, just BS for him to sell his sell his concept. Um, but she looks very surprised, very impressed, um, but also kind of assessing her brother's reaction to see if she needs to like mitigate a freak out. Um, he... Kind of gauging him. He's looking at it. You can tell that there's some things churning in him. Both is just pure, like, kind of pure ecstasy, um, childlike delight of, oh, the places we could go kind of thing. Um, there's a, a bit of, again, the strange, I'm not even sure what I'm looking at, so how do I know what this is? Um, and there's also a, a, a deep sense of confidence, um, like, yeah. He's excited. I can be excited. He's looking for my money. Like, you can tell that he feels good about whatever talk is going to come up. Blanche will... Seeing that he looks excited rather than freaked out, um, will just kind of let herself smile and uh, turn towards uh, Mr. Hogan. That is... Um, that is impressive. He like very you, oh, sorry. And you want my brother to be your investor or your partner? <clears throat> Takes a deep breath, kind of smiles that you've noticed that uh, hesitates for a moment that you're you're the one asking this question. Ah, yes, well it is it is a uh, I've been working on this for quite a long time, unfortunately. Uh, no one else seems to really know exactly what it is, and I really need to get a test, at least, to be able to display. Um, I have spoken with Elijah quite a bit. He said he would do the initial funding, but he is not my sole investor, surely not. I just needed a, an opportunity to well, capture some of this life, and he kind of beckons towards the, the lights displayed on the wall. Yes, I know surely with this I will get all the money I need, of, of course. I would be surprised if you didn't. <laughs> and I'm sure, based on the look on my brother's face, he's quite interested in talking business with you. Yeah, he, Elijah kind of uh, stands and, and puts his hand on your shoulder. <laughs> As my sister says, I, I'd be very interested to uh, continue conversation, uh, Mr. Hogan. Uh, perhaps... Uh, Join me in the den. I, I might have a bit of drink. We might be able to discuss things further. Uh, Blanche, would you, would you mind taking Nina perhaps to a... Oh, why don't you show her that, that horse you have? Oh, you love him so much. I, I have no doubt that she would love to see him as well. Of course. Nina kind of stands up. Uh, very well. Uh, yes, it seems she's kind of begun to become a bit disinterested. She, she's been staring very deeply at the pictures you know you may have even seen her eyes kind of almost following and then going back and following and going back and she she seems strange about it but she stands and kind of looks to you to lead her out of the room um i will are you feeling all right if if you prefer i i could have uh, someone take you home well, she she kind of looks and and gives you a small smile. Oh no, dear, I'm I'm quite fine. Oh, no, it's just a uh, oh. Tobias, he's he's been working on that thing for for so so long. It. I I don't believe I could have ever th dreamt about what the capabilities actually were. He he talked such large and and in scale and scope, but uh, it's strange. It's. It's it's like he was able to copy me, and hmm. I don't know. It's just it's it's just so strange to see it actually used finally. Ah, uh, I I can understand. It's always a little disconcerting to see something you're not familiar with happen in front of you, especially when you're personally involved. But I don't feel any different, so. I think I'll prefer to think of it as a moving portrait than anything. Yes, I believe he calls it a kinetoscope. Uh, moving pictures, I, I think he said. So I think that would be fitting just fine. 
I'm not sure what he plans to do with it, but, uh, oh, well, Tobias, he, he definitely, more or less, this seems to be his child, and he wishes to see it go on to bigger and better places. Well, I think given what we've seen, that what he can do with it, what's the phrase, um, the sky's the limit, as it were. <laughs> Just kind of chuckles, and as you begin making your way kind of down the, the garden towards your personal stable, she again kind of stops every once in a while to smell the flowers. Who, who might I ask is, is the one that uh, designed your garden here? It's, it's, it has a beautiful layout. Oh, I did. Oh, truly. A reader and a designer. You have quite the talent, don't you? And you're so young. Where did you have this talent from? Many, many years of my mother drilling it into my head. <laughs> I, I've I've noticed, yeah, your mother doesn't seem to be around. I'm. Man, it... Yes, our our parents uh, died hmm. years ago. It's just Elijah and I. She kind of looks a bit saddened, and then there's you, almost a moment of like reaction of. I just I just realized. With what we've done today, when we are all, the three of us, dead and gone, we will never actually be dead and gone. We will always be there, moving, breathing. Yes, she, like, smiles. Today, I suppose we have a little piece of immortality. We do. <laughs> a bit of pride swells in her chest. Um, so as you make your way to the, the stables, do you have a lot of horses? You just have one? Um, we've probably got a few. You know, we've got ones that are meant to pull carriages and probably a couple of, of, of personal mounts. Um, I imagine after our parents passed away that there were several that probably got got uh, sold, not necessarily because we couldn't keep them, but because they were favorites of mom and dad's and it was just too painful to have them around. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, there's probably, you know, we've probably each got our personals and we've got the ones for carriages and for the servants to use to run air. Mm -hmm. Um, as you kind of get close to it, she, she looks for a moment and then she kind of clutches at her, her stomach and looks at you, oh, dear, I'm, I'm so sorry. If you'll excuse me for a moment, I think I, I, I might need to just return and, and take a seat. She begins to kind of like straighten her back and begin to make her way uh, back to the house kind of slowly. Um, I'm you... going to walk with her. Okay. Yeah. Um, you... But before I, I follow, I... the stable boy's ready. Looks um, like the boys are probably going to be at this for a while to help her potentially if she has to get home. Okay. Yeah. So they, you know, you kind of tell them to get the horses ready, all that. Um, you help her walk back, kind of usher her to the, the washroom. Um, you, you can hear the both of them, you know, talking very excited. Um, you know, Elijah is asking him what, it, what is his plan. Um, Tobias is talking about opening some kind of studio where he can just take live portraits. That's what he's beginning to call them. Um, live portraits of, of, of rich and famous people. Save them for immortality. Um, with all of his kind of flavored and honeyed words, uh, Elijah seems to be more and more excited. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Do you do you stay to over here kind of more if he asks for, for price? Or what would you be interested in kind of hearing from the conversation? Um, it's, it's less that I'm, I'm hugely interested in the conversation. I'm mostly just trying to gauge um, whether my brother's kind of kid in a candy store he just wants to pay for everything because it all looks really good or if he's making at least to my ears what sounds like a rational business decision you know trying not to let his his heart run away with his head is basically what she's curious about so i think you have it's a kind of a difficult situation because you have the creator who is extremely excited and may not even know exactly what he has or know what to ask for 
Um, and then, yeah, you, you also have your brother who has an idea of like what a normal business would be, but this is not a normal business. You know, th this is an artistic venture, something that is not, you know, factories and businesses like he's normally investing in. Um, yeah, I think when, the, when they start kind of discussing specifics, there's mentions of um, one of the warehouses that your brother owned, kind of reconverting that into the actual studio, um, covering, covering overhead costs of bringing on the initial crew to um, the laborers, the, the crew members, to be able to actually create kind of the, the private rooms, the, um, the, the money that's needed to actually develop the, uh, what he calls film, within it to create that um, there's a decent cost so it's a lot of kind of initial opening costs um, it, the the number itself doesn't seem to be as high as anything you may have heard before it definitely is nowhere around like a factory cost but i think for you it is um he he's kind of being brought in as um Not necessarily an overseer. He Tobias seems to be welcoming him to utilize his studio as often as possible. Almost, I, I, he's kind of beckoning to him to be an actor, someone that he uses in front of his cameras quite often as part of the deal as well. Interesting. Okay. Um. Well, I'm gonna listen for a little bit while. Mrs. Hogan is in the uh, bathroom, and <clears throat> excuse me, and then I will um, sort of knock on the door for a moment to try and get their attention, and uh, kind of slide in after I've, you know, sort of announced myself without words. Um, mm -hmm. Mrs. Hogan seems to be feeling somewhat under the weather and tired. I thought perhaps I'd. I'd take her home um, while you boys discuss business. I can have the servants prepare dinner for you if you're going to be staying, Mr. Hogan. Yeah, Tobias kind of uh, looks to you again with a, a bit of shock. You know, why would she be coming into the conversation? But when he hears, you know, your concern, he kind of looks, uh, that, that would be just fine. Um, yes, let, let Nina know that uh, I'll probably be a few hours. If, if you wouldn't mind... Uh, yeah, so seeing her home, that would be great. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely readily available for a meal. Uh, what do you say, Elijah? Shall we have a bit of a drink and a bit of a... Uh, what do you have? And Elijah kind of looks and probably have some some steak. Uh, oh, I, I can go and, and, and check. Kind of looks to you and gives you kind of the eyes of thanks, but don't interrupt again. All right. Very well. Um, have a good night she'll kind of bow out of the room. Okay. Um, and, uh, go <clears throat> Yeah, as you are making your way out, you hear kind of the, the door open, and Miss Hogan kind of comes out. She, um, you, you can see she's a, a bit flushed, um, but she comes out, she smiles. Ah, everything's just fine, dear. Well, Seems like the boys are getting along. They do seem to be, but they also seem like they're going to be at it for a while. Um, I need to go into town. Would you like to ride in with me? She kind of smiles, huh? I think that would that would be lovely, yes. Uh, I, I live within the, the, the gated community. Um, I don't think that's too far away from here. It leaves you straight to downtown from there, if you wish. That wouldn't be a, a nuisance for you, would it? Oh, no, not at all. It's perfectly fine. Um... Let me go and grab a few things and uh, let the servants know what they need to make the dinner mm -hmm. and we'll be off. Uh, very well. I'll um, meet you on the front porch then. A bit of uh, fresh air might do me well. Yes. And she'll stop in in the kitchen, um, you know, basically, you know, steak and vegetables. And mm -hmm. The servants know what they're doing. They don't need much as far as direction. Um, she's just going to give them the... the the more exact request that was made mm -hmm. um, and uh, look for the maid with the flowers yeah so as you um, are making your way out of the the kitchen the maid kind of uh 
almost runs into. It seems like she was actually heading towards the front door. Oh, Miss Astor, I'm, I's so sorry. Yes, uh, here's the bouquet you had requested for Miss um, Hogan. Thank you very much. It's beautiful. Yeah, she's mixed um, in a variety of kind of white and yellow daisies, a bit of the stems of, you know, the, the more fresh kind of herbs and stuff. It has a very lovely kind of a... It has that, that sweet, but also that kind of earthly scent from the herbs. Mm. Um, she'll take that, and she's going to very quickly go upstairs and change it into a more out and about rather than super high society fancy dining outfit like her brother asked her to put on. Mm -hmm. So she's not getting her really good clothes all dirty. And um, then she'll head out to meet with Miss Hogan and the carriage. So as you kind of exit out there, the carriage is being pulled around. You have your driver kind of sitting up there. He has his nice suit and his top hat, top hat on. The horses seem to be all, you know, brushed down, looking prim and proper in the carriage itself. Um, is it one of the kind of closed top ones or is it an open style carriage? It's closed top. Mm -hmm. So the driver kind of gets off and steps towards the, the door of the carriage, kind of opens it and kind of beckons towards you. Huh? Everything should be ready for you, Miss Astor. Where might I be taking you today? Um, well, the gated community first. We're going to be taking Mrs. Hogan home. Um, and then to the library, I think. Very well. Kind of helps uh, Miss Hogan to get up and, and into, um, and the carriage itself it has, you know, a small kind of pitcher of water that's built in a few of the um, glasses there. Um, and she kind of takes her seat and looks to you. Oh, that's a, quite a beautiful bouquet you have there. Oh, this is for you. Sorry. Oh, she... um, we so... noticed you were partial to the white ladies. She kind of looks at, oh, these are so, so lovely. Yes, they, they, these will be beautiful at the home. I, To be honest, I can't wait to bring a bit of this uh, fresh air home. I think it will do us good. Kind of looks behind and grabs one of the glasses of water and like pours a little bit of, of water in it and kind of sticks the, the stems in there just just a little bit, just to, to keep them wet. And she kind of looks at them, you see her like feel the the texture of the, the soft petals and kind of rub her, her finger down the, the, the stem. Um, she'll kind of lean in, kind of, uh, you know, usher the, the smell to her. She seems to be very, um, she focused on kind of the, the senses, the feel, the, the, tuss, the, the touch of the flowers. And as you get on board and the door closes, you hear the driver kind of step up to his seat and you begin to ride into the gated community. Um, so let's take a look here. Yeah, as we head back um, into the alley, Mike, you see these constables making their way down the alley towards one of the bodies it doesn't look like they have seen you yet you do see that the the door is right there um you could try to close it so they don't see you or it's possible they might see you in here well what would you like to do mikey mikey mike Mikey, Mikey, Mike. Your microphone's muted, Faison. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. I'm gonna... Yeah, thanks. Uh, I'm gonna stumble out into the alleyway and just kind of plop down on the ground. Kind of making a ruckus on purpose. Okay. Um, and Ember, you, you see Mike kind of rush out of the room and then fall down on the ground grunting and groaning. Well, naturally, I'm going to kind of move quickly over to him and kneel down. Do I see the guys? <laughs> As you come out of the room, you do. You see three constables making their oh. way. As Mike falls down on the ground, the, the three of them begin kind of running towards you. Uh, the, the first one gets there. He's probably mid-20s. He has a very thin kind of black mustache. And he kind of kneels down. Oh, what has happened here? Is he okay? Kind of looks back. And who are they? And looks into the building. And what? Is this building on fire? You're welcome. Uh... <laughs> you two, go oh. and fetch the fire brigade. And they begin running off, assuming that just... the smoke is coming from fire. You guys are dealing with the cops. I'm just lost and high in a maze. 
He he reaches down to you, Mike, and like goes to turn you to face him. What, what has happened to him? What, what has happened here? <laughs> Woman, speak! <laughs> oh god, I can't decide if I want to tell Fire! Crazy little thing of a shoot. Just, when, when all else fails, just overact. <laughs> fire! Uh, oh my god, the building's on fire! Help! Help! Yeah, pretty much. The building is on fire, and he fell out, and I don't know where those people came from, but you need to find help immediately. Uh, very good. Help me! He, he, like, goes to, like, lift the, his arm, and this is, like, what, 350, 400 pounds, you, you think? Ah. Yeah, but, yeah. Yeah. Hey, he, what do you call me, fat? No, you're just a very large individual. You're, we, he's trying to drag a linebacker right now. He goes into like, look, get him away from the building. Oh, God. I, I don't know if I'm able to pull him. I, you you I could am, probably help I'm him. not helping at all. Yeah, I'm not helping at all. Yeah, he's dead weight. Just... Yeah. He's like digging his feet <laughs> and as run. he like the, the dirt begins to kind of almost like he's stepping in mud, he begins to sink and he's like dragging you every inch. Your entire body is just like starting to pile dirt in front of you. Like you feel dirt starting to form underneath your chin from your chest moving it in front of you like a shovel. He's just like <laughs> trying Reminds to Reminds me of that scene alive. from uh, Constantine when he's trying to pull Constantine into hell with him. Oh god. He yeah, she's gonna take his up. other arm and try. <laughs> He's like, alright, at least help me push him over. Like grabs his shoulder and begins trying to lift him up to like flip him on his back. Yes. Yeah, she grabs his other shoulder or his the same shoulder and starts trying to push him over too. <laughs> so he flips you onto your, your back and he begins to kind of check you over. What what is the, the state that Mike is trying to portray? Uh, basically, as I get pushed onto my back, I'm going to kind of just flop my head against the ground and just kind of roll my eyes back. Are you trying to, like, what what kind of sickness issue are you wanting to, like, show? Well, between the eyes rolled back and the mask and the smoke, oh. it's it's clear that I've had too much smoke. So he he goes to like rip the the mask off your um off your face and begins to do chest compressions. Quick, it it hurts. He is doing very hard chest compressions. Are you gonna let him do it, or are you gonna try to? Do they even know about chest compressions? Oh, this what this constable does. Absolutely, he does. <laughs> You let me play with these things, I'm going to play with them. <laughs> That's the thing. He's probably not doing them right because it feels like he's about to break a rib if he keeps going. Well, you're supposed to. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my uh, God. As he's doing some of the compressions, I'm just going to start coughing and straighten my eyes out. <laughs> yeah, He's going to, like, pull him off about the same time as well. Okay. You're... you're... So just as he begins to, to cough, like the, the constable gets pulled back by, by Amber, kind of looks around. Who, who are you two? What, you don't look like you work here. So what are you doing? And who are those two men? Wait, Mike should look like he works here. Yeah. He has that story tag. <laughs> Fucking filthy. Right like now. a local. <laughs> True. To she a point. doesn't look like she works here. The Amber like, definitely on? doesn't. The two dead bodies well, definitely don't look like they work there either. <laughs> well, well, not anymore. I mean, she's clearly just my manager. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> is, is, is there anyone else in the building? We don't know. We weren't able to check. All right. Oh, uh, yes. It's Here, he, he goes and he like reaches for a canteen he has on his belt and hands it to you. And he rushes into the side entrance. Oh, blue. Uh, oh. Street stand, stand silent for a moment. You all kind of hesitate, waiting for him to return. He doesn't. These clouds are really violent. <laughs> She's just going to kind of like straighten and run a hand through her hair. 
<laughs> William, you are walking down, walking with your, your hand kind of on the, the wall when you hear a very solid thud behind you. You turn around and you see a constable that has just run through the smoke into a wall and a steel spike is going through his brain, through his eye. His body stands there lifeless and you notice that this raw wall is much sharper than you would think it to be. And as we see whatever look William portrays, the camera fades with the smoke. And that is where we're going to leave it for tonight. Oh no. He's, <laughs> He's dead. stuck in the maze. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, you guys killed a cop. I'm not even there yet. <laughs> this is like the third cop we've killed. It's okay. It's really not. This is the whole reason the order sent me. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you should show up sooner. <laughs> to be fair, I've done nothing but yell at clouds and be high, okay? <laughs> so much chaos oh has been God. caused by so little action. It's beautiful. Well, it's so <laughs> beautiful. If you guys didn't realize, I basically broke William's back and am now in the process of repairing it by sending him a nice little meal. <laughs> <laughs>